So whether you want to teach online full-time or whether you just want to use it in an emergency situation, like say makeup lessons, supporting parents and students is really important. And one of the big things that we need to do is we need to actually make sure that parents are on board. So hi, I'm Rosemary Penner from The Unfinished Lesson. And in this video, I'm sharing four tips to help parents get on board um, and to make sure that we take them from no way to, you know what, I'll give this a try. I know that might not seem like a big deal, the okay, we'll give this a try, but these tips are specifically for the clients that they really do not want to try this. Um, and so I used to have a traveling piano studio, just for a little background. And what I didn't realize is I was already using elements of online before I transitioned over to an online studio. So I'd mentioned makeup lessons as a way to have students um, that you could do online instead of doing them in person. And as a travel teacher, this was a massive deal. It's a lot of time and energy not only with the scheduling, but just physically driving to and from homes for makeup lessons. And so when I decided to do away with those, I needed a different way of doing it. And so what I did is I used to do FaceTime lessons with my phone. That's right. Cell phone, uh, no external mic, no lovely lighting, really bad angle, kind of made me look like I had a double chin. Yeah, it wasn't great. But you know what? These four tips worked in that situation. Even without all the ideal stuff or equipment, it actually helped out a lot. And those makeup lessons, those in-person makeup lessons, yeah, they were gone. So what are the four tips? Okay, well, the first thing before we get into the tips, just always remember to put yourself in your client's shoes. If they're saying no, there could be many, many reasons for this. And so if you're feeling a little frustrated, especially if they're asking you to go against your policies, just don't respond right away. Give yourself a chance to kind of step back from the situation um, and see if you can use these tips to turn things around and hopefully make a better situation and circumstances for not just you, but also them as well, okay? So tip number one is find out the root of the problem. There are so many reasons why people might not want an online lesson, even, and I'm going to count cell phone lessons in there as well. Um, so it could be they're worried it's not going to be engaging enough. It's just another piece of screen time. Uh, it could be they're concerned about audio or video lagging. That's a big deal in rural areas. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, maybe they don't have an extra device. For example, when I first went online, one of my students, we had to plan her lesson based on a time that her dad was not gonna have any meetings so that she could use the laptop that he was using. Um, and if we couldn't do that, the weeks we couldn't, then she was on her cell phone and I had to adapt. Right? I mean, there's so many different ways, but if we know what the reason why they don't want to do online is, then all of a sudden we can come up with a solution. Tip number two, make it easy for them. As a parent, I have a lot of different plates, right? A lot of different things that I'm juggling and I want to support my kids, but I cannot be doing everything. I cannot keep track of everything. And so if we don't make it easy for our clients, that's when we're going to get pushback. So for example, choose a platform, choose something that's going to be easy for them to use. You don't need a bunch of bells and whistles. Okay. I'll be honest as a parent. Here's what I want. I want my kid to get in the lesson easy. I want them to get out of the lesson easy and whatever they need for the week. I just want to get in, get it and get out. I know that's not necessarily the attitude we want our clients to have, but it's reality. So 
let's embrace that. Let's keep that in mind. Um, make sure that they have resources that they can easily access during the week. I make tutorial videos during lesson, and then I make sure that my students can easily access those. Um, you know, I make sure that they have help documents if they need them. I make sure that before our first lesson that th they've already gotten a link to a video. They don't even need to sign into anything to see it. A link to a video on like this is exactly how you're going to sign in this is exactly how you're going to set up the camera so I can see what I need to and you can see what you need to um, you're going to manage expectations in person online there will always be something that goes wrong at some point and you know what that's okay it's totally fine if we manage the expectation that, you know what, maybe we might have a problem, but this is the backup plan, this is how we can easily fix it, and this is how we can move on, it makes it so much easier. Um, and just, we need to have a sense of humor when things go wrong. I tend to laugh now, you know. I have um, some students that go, your microphone is off, and I go, oh my goodness. Okay, can you hear me now? And I'm like laughing because this happens all the time. Um, or maybe I'm using a different program and all of a sudden they can't see my video or I can't see their video. We just laugh and we figure it out, it's okay. Tip number three, we gotta train our students to be independent. There are a few things, whether we are teaching in person or online. Um, if you're teaching in person and you only want to use online as emergency, I would highly recommend starting this training in person. Um, measure numbers. Training our students that they, if they're reading music, that they know what measure numbers are and how to find them so that we're talking about the same thing. Um, being able to write something in their music. Now for very young students, if they're only six, maybe they aren't really writing yet, but you know what they can do? They could put a little sticker, a little star sticker on a section that needs extra practice. Or they could put a little triangle and then a square for their A, B, A section in their music. Those are all things they can do, even without using words, even without having fantastic motor control skills for writing. As long as they're using pencil, it'll be fine. Um, and making sure that they have supplies at the piano or their instrument. So I'm a big stickler about there needs to be a pencil and an eraser at your piano. If I find out that you have used it for your homework during the week, I'm gonna go, what? No, it's gotta stay here. Um, one mom, I was so happy to find out she had actually put extra pencils in the piano bench so that her kids wouldn't see them and that way when they were needed they were there. Um, I used to hide the pencils on my piano as far away from where everybody in my family would be so that it was out of their way to grab them. That way I had them when I was composing. Um, so those are three things that you can easily train students you know, that they can find sections in their music, that they can, um, you know, be able to mark the music in some way, and that they have the supplies they need. The fourth thing you can train them to do is set it up so that you can see them. And I keep it really simple. You know what, all I need is that we can have a conversation and I can see your hands as you play the piano. That's it. I'm not going to go into how far away it needs to be from the piano or how high it needs to be. They can figure all of that out because they can see it on their screen, right? And go, oh, uh, she's seeing from here down and we're having a conversation, probably a little awkward. And so they can just, you know, add a book or two. It's all good. The fourth thing is that uh, we want to share wins from lessons. So our students will rise to whatever level we have the expectations at. And yes, it's going to take patience and time to get them to those expectations, but it's really great to share the journey with them. So for example, um, just let them know at the end of lesson, you know what, um, call mom or dad over if they're available. 
let's let them know you rocked signing in on your own or you we just started measure numbers today and you were able to find them no problems right these are all wonderful things and if we're sharing how well that online portion went and yes again I'm going to keep saying this even if you're using your cell phone we're going to call that online even if they did something really great there just make sure you share it with the parents we're creating a positive feedback loop at that point um, and if you're not able to meet with the parent at the end of lesson, that's totally fine. Just send them a quick text or an email. And it doesn't have to be anything long. You know, one or two sentences. And hey, I'm really excited to see you next week. All right, let's do a quick review here of the four tips. So, of course, we're going to put ourselves in our client's shoes. But tip number one is find out the root of the problem. This is our first step in finding a solution that works for them as well. Two, make it really easy for them. Understand you are one of many things going on in their life. So the easier you make it for them, both during lesson and during the week, the more buy-in you're gonna get. Three, train students to be independent. They're gonna rise up to whatever level you expect them to go to. So start training them. Help them be independent. Parents are going to love that, which means it's less effort on their part. They're going to be much more open to online if they don't have to be involved. And four, share the wins. Share the positives from lesson so that there's a positive feedback loop. All right. What if they still say no? That's okay. If a parent still doesn't want to be online, even if it's an emergency situation, their kid is sick, you're sick, the roads are really bad, whatever it may be, check out the article in the description below, okay? It's uh, what to do when parents don't want to be online. I share three scenarios, two which are really, really successful. Um, I've used them with incredible success both when I taught in person and then even now that my studio is fully online with online clients um, and the third one is a good backup one as well all right let me know in the comments what is the tip that I shared what is the idea that's going to make the biggest difference in your studio okay let me know I'm really eager to read it and I will see you in the next video.